Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the Black Ops 3 beta. I'm going to be giving you all the info about the beta, when it is, what systems, how long, maps, etc, etc. And I'm going to be talking about the impact of the beta on Black Ops 3 as a whole because there are some good things and some bad things about having an open beta for an unreleased game. Let's start off with the info. The PlayStation 4 gets the beta first. That's the new Sony exclusivity thing. So if you have PS4, you'll get to play Black Ops 3 first. It starts on August 19th, which is only about three weeks away now and ends August 23rd. Pretty short window, it's only five total days. The PS4 beta is only five days and that's not, it seems really short and it is a little bit short compared to, you know, you want to move on to the next game immediately, but compared to other open betas, that's a pretty reasonable amount of time. Xbox One and PC get the beta from August 26th through August 30th, which is approximately a month away, and they get them for the same amount of time. That's the same five days, but they're not on that Sony exclusivity train, so they have to wait just a little bit later but it's going to be the same beta as far as I know the Xbox one and PC are going to get the same beta the same maps the same everything to test out that the PlayStation 4 users got just the PS4 guys will get it first unfortunately there is no beta for last gen consoles at least not that there has been any announced I don't think they're doing beta for last gen I just have a feeling that last gen is not gonna be so pretty so we're just gonna hide that one and put it away and there has been no information released at all about what maps are gonna be contained in the beta what guns are gonna be in the beta what special if there'll be zombies, if there'll be single player. As far as I know, it's just going to be a multiplayer beta, and if I had to bet, I would bet that it's very similar to what was available at E3 and what'll be available at Gamescom. Now let's talk about the impact of the beta, because this is something that's very new for Call of Duty. There are some good things about it and some bad things. We'll start with the bad things first, and I'm going to compare it to the Titanfall beta. The Titanfall beta was super popular. Like, the Titanfall beta was the most played game on Xbox One when it first came out. People bought the Xbox One just to play the Titanfall beta, which was crazy, but people overplayed it. The Titanfall beta, I want to say, lasted a week, maybe even 10 days, if my memory serves me correctly, and it's a little bit nebulous in there because I played a ton of the Titanfall beta. I played it right into the ground, which kind of ruined Titanfall for me. I completely overplayed it, and I was tired of playing Titanfall before Titanfall even came out, and that's something that I do worry about happening with Black Ops 3. People could totally overdo it, so when the full game comes out, that hype, that excitement, isn't really there and this is especially true for Call of Duty because Call of Duty survives on a hype train. Call of Duty is almost half marketing game. They're very good at it and I just want to throw that out there, but it's very different than a normal game. Call of Duty is like, oh, I want to learn about the guns. I want to learn about this. I want to find out what bit of secret info is in the game. And once you put it out there for the public to play with, that little bit of magic, that specialness is kind of ruined, and that could be bad for the overall longevity of Black Ops 3. And it could also be buggy because it is a beta. A lot of people look at this like a free, like a free to play, like an advertisement, like a play our game early, but it's supposed to be a beta where we test things, where we find problems and fix those problems. And and if it comes out really buggy or unbalanced or there's a big problem, a large portion of the community might not understand that and just assume that it's going to be a crap game and that those won't be fixed in the final version, which again can be bad for Black Ops 3. But of course, it can be positive too, because this essentially serves as a free marketing tool for Black Ops 3. Most people are really looking at this not so much as a beta, but just, hey, play our game, we'll prove to you that it's going to be good and that you'll like it, etc., etc. And I think that's really the core goal. And I think that's a good thing. A lot of people are skeptical about this Call of Duty. A lot of people are kind of skeptical almost anything futuristic. So getting them to sit down and play it is a good thing. And I think that informed consumers are the best type of consumers. They make their decisions appropriately. It also gives developers a chance to fix and find undiscovered bugs. Like even if there's going to be bugs in the beta and we're going to get them fixed before the final game comes out, we'll probably find bugs that people don't even notice. Like the devs, they'll get their own like internal bug reporting and feedback and they'll fix things that could be huge problems early that they wouldn't have found otherwise because testing like doing game testing in the studio or in an environment like a work environment is totally different than throwing a piece of code or a game or some software out there in the wild and letting users and letting regular customers use it because people especially in large numbers do crazy things and they will find bugs that developers never ever would have found and will get those fixed early which is a good thing and that'll make black ops 3 a smoother cleaner and more fun game when it comes out guys that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something useful if you did don't forget to like favorite and subscribe drifter out